The purpose of education is not just so you can do what other people have already done, but rather so that you can learn to create beyond what already exists. When I was a kid, that idea just intimidated the heck out of me. The idea of creating something different or new, it just seemed like everything had already been created. How to, The idea of making something else was beyond intimidating. And when I tell people this, it, it strikes them as weird because the defining feature of Vora Method is the innovativeness of it. The fact that we're always coming up with new things and new ideas. You know, the Vora Method itself is a new and different approach to education. And so I want to tell you a little bit about how I made that transition from being very, very frightened of the, even the idea of trying to come up with something that didn't already exist, I basically thinking that it was impossible to do, to the current way, way of, of running this business, Vora Method, where in addition to our big innovations, we have constant innovations on a daily basis. We're always coming up with new things. Um, I, want, I want to introduce to you this, to you this guy, Adam Smith. Adam Smith is the uh, founder of, of modern economics, the father of modern economics. He tells this story in The Wealth of Nations about what causes innovations, and he gives this example of one of the most important innovations of the time. If you've ever seen a train, you notice that it kind of puffs smoke, right? Uh, like an old an old style steam engine on a in a movie or something, it puffs smoke. It's not that there's just a continuous stream of steam. It puffs and closes, puffs and closes. And there it used to be that there was they would hire a kid whose job was to just open and close the uh, that particular valve. There was a kid whose job was to do that, and that's all he did. He all he thought about all day was this valve, and he wanted to spend the days just goofing off on the train. So he rigged up this complicated pulley system, which would open and close it for him, so that he didn't have to do it, and so he could just goof off all day. Now, when this was discovered that he'd set this thing up, this became one of the most important innovations during that the era of steam technology. And the thing that you notice about it is that it was very, very small. Innovations are usually small. I want to show you guys the inside of the VMH. It's the Vora method helper. You can see there's a lot that goes on in it. And each of the things in here, each of these things, you see that some of the stuff has been commented out, the, the green stuff, that stuff that used to be there that we've later improved. Now, all of those are tiny little innovations that you constantly build on. So when we talk about innovating, it doesn't have to be some jaw-dropping, world-shattering thing. You might do some of those. That would be fantastic. But that's not what all innovation is. Innovation is usually small. It's just a, a slightly better way of doing something. And it requires basically two things. One is attention. You have to pay, you have to be involved with it. The more you work with something, the more you use something, the more you're going to say like, oh, wouldn't it be better if this was shaped a little bit differently, for example. The other thing it requires, persistence. Innovation means that you are going to have to just not give up on things. That instead of just trying one new version of a thing, you'll probably do 20, 30, 40, 100 trials before you get it. If you have a computer, an iPad, a phone, you'll notice that every so often there are updates to the operating system. That's the most basic level of, of a computer or smartphone, tablet, whatever. That means the best programmers in the world who are just, just at the basic level of what they're making, they haven't gotten it right yet. There's still room for improvement. They're still working at it. So whenever you get an update, that's the programmer saying, like, yeah, we got it pretty good, but we could do better. So here's the better version. And in a couple of weeks, there'll be an even better version. That's what innovation is. It's just constantly improving. And so even if right now you might think, oh, there's no way I could ever come up with something new, it doesn't have to be something huge, and you have to do it right away. Right now, you need to work on building some of the underlying prerequisites, you know, math and reading and whatnot. But the goal isn't just to take something that someone else has done and then copy it. The goal is to actually find ways to build on and improve what's already there to build that idea of innovation.